Hey there, Lori Rosansky at lorirosansky.com. And for those that do not know me, I help home business owners bust through their technical challenges so they can quit their nine to five jobs sooner. So today I'm going to be doing a quick um, review of AWeber. AWeber is an autoresponder. And if you're not sure what an autoresponder is, the simplest definition I can give you, it's a, a database that collects uh, people's emails and names. And what you do with that information is you'll put them on some kind of automated email list so that you're continually showing them things so that they eventually buy from you. So that's the, the purpose. So if you always hear that the money is in your list, they are referring to your autoresponder or however you maintain your list of prospects. So AWeber is one of the tools and that's one of the tools that I use. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in to AWeber and uh, I'm gonna show you how to set up a list. So I have a couple different lists, but um, basically what you're going to do, and sorry, I have to move some things around because of the uh, collaboration tool. So you're gonna go under manage lists and you're gonna see all the different lists that I have. And all you're gonna do is say, create a list. So um, it's gonna to wanna to know my company. And this is defaulting from my first list that I created. So you would enter your company name. If it's you, then you're gonna enter your name. If you have a website that's associated with it, you wanna put that as well. You want to put the email address of whatever you're using um, because basically if you look at this, it basically says as part of can spam that it's required that uh, you, that all email messages contain a valid postal address. So you can either use a PO box or a physical postal address, but you are required to put a valid address. Um, and then, you know, what do you want the sender's name to appear as and what um, email do you want to use? So I use the G my Gmail account and then I go ahead and say next step. So it says, what do you want to name the list? So I'm going to call this a test uh, customer list just for this example, but you should name it something more meaningful to you. Briefly describe the emails that are going your subscribers are going to see. Now you're, you have to be careful with this one because your subscribers will see the description and they'd see this if they happen to opt out. So if you click on the where, it says your subscribers will see if they choose to unsubscribe from your list at a later date. So you wanna call this something meaningful and uh, usually what I'll do is I'll say, um, um, Let's see, um, my tips and training is designed to provide you value so you can quit your nine to five jobs sooner. And then what I usually say is, if you opt out, you'll miss out on my additional training. Are you sure you want to do this? You can type in whatever you want, but again, um, if somebody clicks on your opt-out button, uh, this is what, where it will appear. So I'll just say next steps. A confirmation message can be sent to a new subscriber when they join your list. Now, by default in AWeber, a customized a, a message is sent. So, you know, you can pick, confirm your request for information, confirm your subscription, you can put their first name. That's what, that's what this, this means, the name. 
however they entered the name. Usually I would pick first name. Now, if you are new to um, email, or I should say to autoresponding, um, while it's a good idea to have your um, prospects confirm, um, a lot of times what happens is um, people won't confirm or it'll sit in their email for a while. So you can get around it. Um, let me just finish going through this message preview and you can say click, you can edit this or you can do whatever you want. And then you can say approve message and create list. Now what I usually do as soon as I'm done creating that, so now I have my test customer list, is I will call Aweber. And Aweber actually allows us to opt to, to not send the opt-in uh, message. So I'll usually call and say, I don't want it to opt in. It usually they usually want to see some kind of message in your um, in your uh, legacy system, and I'll go through that in a minute. So now I, what I want to do is let's go through these customers under each one of these uh, under this list there are these different list options and i'd recommend you going through each and every one of them just to make sure it's saying what you want so under basic information again this is what i called it this list description is the one that i had added when i told you they'll see it if you opt out my name my address so this is pretty good all right Notifications, receive an email every time a new subscriber is added to your list. You can go ahead and put your name in there. Um, by default, they usually notify you anyway. So now I wanna say, go to my personalized list. So again, it's my name, my company. I can put an email signature so I can say, um, uh, with gratitude. Sincerely, Lori, if I can spell. I can hook up my, I can add an, uh, a logo. I can connect my accounts. So it does that by default. I don't really use my Twitter account, so I don't bother. You can connect it with Facebook. I'm not gonna do that here. Um, you can include a web form. You can un include an unsubscribe page, and then there's snippets. I don't really use them that much, but um, if the way you use a global snippet is basically if there was a variable that you used in all your email campaigns, you might want to include it here. This way, if you decide to change change it like an address. Let's say I have an address in Connecticut and I moved to Georgia. Well, instead of going through all my email messages that um, my prospects would get, I could just change it in this one area and it would uh, replicate. It would always, it would pick up the new address consistently. So I don't have anything here. And then confirmation message. And this is the one where I was telling you that you can actually call Aweber and opt out. So again, English, confirm your subscription. I can edit my message. Here's where I'm gonna turn it off. But So I'm gonna say yes. Even though I turn it off here, it really isn't turned off until you call Aweber. So you need to give them a call and I will go ahead and save my settings. So the next thing you wanna do is you want to create at least one message in your, now there's campaigns and there's legacies. Campaigns are, are used a little differently. Um, there's some quirky information, uh, quirky things with campaigns, so I don't use the campaigns. I always use it as a legacy follow-up series. And basically what you can do is you can, let's see if I have anything in my draft folder, I don't. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna try to copy one. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna, I don't have anything there either. So let's see, let's just go here. So let's say I was in my test one. So this is one of my campaigns. So basically what you're gonna do when, when you're in your draft folder, 
I'm going to copy this to draft and go back here. I'm going to create a message. So when I create a message, I'm going to click this button. And basically, this is going to be a, a blank email. Now, I have mine as a template, so it picks up certain information. And basically, you start writing out your email. So this is, whoops, this is one I did to, on uh, the importance of a DMO, and I just messed this up. So um, for now, I'll just cancel this. But basically, you're going to put this email together, and when you're done, you're going to save it. So I'm not going to save it because, again, I just messed that up. But once you're done with the email, you're going to come down here. There's two things you want to do with this. You want to check your spam score. Spam score is a score that is given to an email, um, and it shows you whether or not it will actually get sent or actually gets uh, put in someone's spam folder. So it provides a scoring. So my score is zero, but if I had um, bit.ly links, increases the score. Um, and you know, again, some of these, some of these examples will increase the score, but it gives an overall score, so it will tell you whether or not it will get caught in a spam filter. Then what you want to do is you can test it. So if you go to, let's say I'm done with my email, or at least putting my first one together, I can preview and test it, and I can send a test. I can actually send a test to myself, and it's going to go to this laurierosansky at gmail.com. It says sending and it's sent. So now if I went into my, my Gmail, I would actually see that it was sent and I could read it as if I was a, um, a prospect getting that email. So when I'm all done, what I want to do is I want to put it in my, my, um, my legacy series. So now I'm going to say, send options so this is going to say do i want to send a test email do i want to send a, a broadcast a broadcast is a is usually a one-time message that you send to your recipients like if you were selling something or if you had a blog post and it's just a one-time deal but since i'm going to put this in a series so that it goes out on an automatic basis i'm going to add it to a follow-up series but before i do that because i don't want to mess up this list I'm actually going to copy this to a different list called my test customer. Okay, so it's been copied. So now I can go back to managing that list. And let's see, here we go. So I'm going to go back to that test list. And there's my draft. And now I'm going to add it. Now I'll add it to a follow-up series. So it's gonna say, okay, this is what it's gonna say. It's gonna be number one in the message. And um, it's gonna send me statistics uh, that will track the web links. So if people click on the message, it's gonna track it so I know what the open rate is. So I'm gonna say, go ahead and add it to the follow-up series. And I'm just waiting for it to come back. And here it is in the follow-up series. So I got there by legacy follow-up series. And what you can do is when you get to, if you click on settings, you what I would recommend for your first email message, it always goes out immediately. But if this was a second one or a series of one, it will actually ask you, how do you want to set this up? Do you want it to go out two days later, three days later, whatever? So if I'm back over, let me go into one that I have more messages. So if I pick this one, this one shows a little bit differently. So this is number five in the series. I want it to go out one day later. If I wanted to go out two days later from the last message, I can do that. And I can actually go and get into in detail in terms of what day it's sent, what time it's sent, 
you know, I can get into a lot of specifics here. And again, I want to, it gives me the option of tracking the clicks, sending the messages based on the subscriber's local time and anything else. So I'm going to hit apply. And that's how you put that stuff together. So um, once you have your messages, now you just need your prospects. So um, I, as a bonus to this, if you are a MLSP user, um, I'm gonna show you how to set this up in uh, My Lead System Pro. If you're not, if you do not have a autoresponder at all and you're interested in looking at this, uh, send me a private message. I'm happy to show you what I use and uh, I can walk you through that. So under My Lead System Pro, and you'll have to forgive me because I have all these different things. So in My Lead System Pro, let me expand this screen. This screen's small. Okay. After you sign into your system, you're usually on the home page. So I will go ahead and sign in. I can remember the right password. Okay. I'm going to sign into my account. And when you go into your account settings, you're going to go under account, my autoresponder. Okay. And when you get down to here, this is where you're going to set it up. So um, if you need additional assistance, I would recommend watching this and getting this down and looking at this and then going through the uh, toggle instructions because it does give you some really good information. And for those that are using Aweber, there, there's four short videos that it goes through and um, it's actually uh, does a very good job in terms of helping you set this up. Make sure you go through this Aweber video number four, because this is the one that shows you how to tie in My Lead System Pro and your user account to your um, autoresponder in Aweber. So there's a couple of steps that you need to do. I can't do it here, but um, um, it is important that you do it. And if you get stuck, let me know. I can, I can, I can walk you through it. Um, and then with My Lead System Pro uh, for the Aweber, those campaigns that I just showed you under, under here, so all these campaigns that I get are not ones that I created, but actually are given to me by My Lead System Pro. And again, the instructions are in here in terms of how you download those, um, download those, um, not campaigns, they're, um, sorry, I got stuck. Yeah, I guess they are campaigns, the com campaign codes, and all of those would come down. It also goes into Zapier. I have not used Zapier. But anyway, you're gonna get down here and basically you're, to add the new code, you're gonna create the autoresponder name. You're gonna pick whatever it is. And then what it's gonna ask you to do, and I'm gonna pick this one. Again, there's a process that you have to follow, but basically what you're gonna do is you're going back to your system, you're going back to your list, and it's this unique ID code that you would copy and put into here, but I would be picking a Weber. Okay. And then you would add my, and we're going to call this a test account. And we're going to add new autoresponder. Oh, there was errors, so I'm sure I'm missing something. Oh, I already defined it. So um, actually, the problem 
is I picked the wrong list. So make sure you get the right list. And it's this one that I want. Yeah, my test customer list. Now if I add it, there we go. And there we go. This is the test account. So that's how you add it. You only have to add it once. And then the only time you're going to use it here is when you're actually, um, you have system ca campaigns and under um, MLSP. So under my website, you have your campaigns and your profit campaigns and product and everything else. So if you wanted it to go to a different list than what you have as your default, that's where you would use that. If you're using it in a funnel, uh, you don't necessarily have to um, account for the list in the autoresponder. Funnelizer is a little bit different and it will do that uh, automatically. So that's all I have on the autoresponders today. Again, your money is in your list. If you don't have an autoresponder, you definitely want to uh, consider looking into one. And if you'd like some help or you'd like to talk to me about it in more detail, I'm happy to walk through how I use my, my list and my um, AWeber so that you can see what's right for you. So I appreciate your time today and uh, have a great Wednesday. Thanks.